Analytics has wide-ranging impact on businesses. It can be applied to so many problems in so many different industries that it becomes important to take some time to understand the true scope of analytics in business. This also is a way of classifying the different types of analytics. We're going to look closer at three broad classifications of analytics. One, on the basis of industry. Two, on the basis of business function or what is also called domain analytics. And three, on the basis of the kind of insights offered by the results. Let's start by looking at industries where analytics usage is very prevalent. There are certain industries which have always created huge amounts of data, like credit cards and consumer goods. These industries were among the first ones to adopt analytics. Examples of industries that make extensive use of analytics are credit cards, insurance, retail, etc. So analytics is often classified on the basis of the industry it is being applied to. Hence, you will hear terms such as insurance analytics, retail analytics, web analytics and so on. However, within each industry, analytics can impact many key businesses. Thus, you could also classify analytics on the basis of the business function it's used in. The classification of analytics on the basis of business function it impacts goes as follows. Marketing analytics, sales and HR analytics, supply chain analytics and so on. This can be a fairly long list as analytics has the potential to impact virtually any business activity within a large organization. But the most popular way of classifying analytics is on the basis of what it allows us to do. Let's take a particular situation involving data and see if we can come up with the types of analytics it allows us to do on it. Let's go back to the supermarket to do our weekly grocery run. We would possibly put in our basket a loaf of bread, milk, cheese or yogurt, bananas, cereal and a few other special items for the week, maybe replenishing our supply of spices or lentils. There are those items that we take every week without fail because th those are the staples of our grocery basket. So if we were to create a report on the contents of our grocery basket over the past few months, there would be information on the number of litres of milk we bought how many bananas we ate, and how often we bought spices. This is interesting information for a retailer because it's data about his store and his supplies. This helps the retailer understand the why behind the buy, and this is descriptive analytics. All the information coming from the data is coming from our basket. All we're doing is slicing and dicing the data in different ways, maybe looking at it from different angles or along different dimensions etc. How often did we buy spices? Did we only buy milk when we also bought cereal? Did we buy any other fruits when we bought bananas? So as you can see, descriptive analytics is possibly the simplest type of analytics to perform simply because it uses existing information from the past to understand decisions in the present and hopefully helps decide an effective course of action in the future. However, because of its relative ease of understanding and application, descriptive analytics has been often labelled the unglamorous twin of analytics. But it's also extremely powerful in its potential, and in most business situations, descriptive analytics can help address most problems. But continuing from our grocery example, so our local grocer sees that most people who buy cereal also buy bananas. So he places a smaller banana basket next to the cereal shelf since he predicts that most people will pick them both up. This is predictive analytics. You can actually see this in most of the big supermarket chains all over the world. Retailers are very interested in understanding relationships between products. They want to know if a person buys product A, is he also like to buy product B or product C maybe. This is called product affinity analysis or association analysis and is commonly used in the retail industry. It's also called market basket analysis and is used to refer to a set of techniques that can be applied to analyze a shopping basket or a transaction. Have you ever wondered why milk is placed right at the back of the store, while magazines and chewing gum are right by the checkout? That's because through analytics, retailers realize that while traveling all the way to the back of the store to pick up your essentials, 
you just may be tempted to pick up something else. And also because magazines in chewing gum are cheap impulse buys. You decide to throw them in your cart since they're not too expensive and you've probably been eyeing them as you waited in line at the counter. Predictive analytics works by identifying patterns in historical data and then using statistics to make inferences about the future. At a very simplistic level, we try to fit the data into a certain pattern and if we believe that the data is following a certain pattern, then we can predict what will happen in the future. Let's try and look at another example involving predictive analytics in the telecom industry. A large telecom company has access to all kinds of information about its customers' calling habits. How much time do they spend on the phone? How many international calls do they make? Do they prefer SMS or call numbers outside their city? But this is information one can obtain purely by observation or descriptive analytics. But such companies would more importantly like to know which of their customers plan to leave and take a new connection with their competitors. This will use historical information but rely on predictive modeling and analysis to obtain results. This is predictive analysis. While descriptive analytics is a very powerful tool, it still gives us information only about the past. Whereas in reality, most users' primary concern will always be the future. A hotel owner would want to predict how many of his rooms will be occupied next week. The CEO of a pharma company will want to know which of his under-test drugs is most likely to succeed. This is where predictive analytics is a lot more useful. In addition to these two, there's a third type of analytics which came into existence very recently, maybe just a decade old. This is prescriptive analytics. Prescriptive analytics goes beyond predictive analytics by not only telling you what's going on, but also what might happen, and most importantly, what to do about it. It could also inform you about the impact of these decisions, which is what makes prescriptive analytics so cutting edge. Business domains that are great examples where prescriptive analytics can be used are the aviation industry or nationwide road networks. Prescriptive analytics can predict and effectively correct road bottlenecks or identify roads where tolls can be implemented to streamline traffic. To see how prescriptive analytics functions in the aviation industry, let's look at the following example. Airlines are always looking for ways to optimize their routes for maximum efficiency. This can be billions of dollars in savings. But this isn't that easy to do. With over 50 million commercial flights in the world every year, that's a flight every second. Just a simple flight route between two cities, let's say San Francisco and Boston, has a possible 2,000 route options. So the aviation industry often relies on prescriptive analytics to decide what, which, and how they should file their airplanes to keep costs down and profits up. So we've taken a fairly in-depth look at descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics. The focus of this course is going to be descriptive analytics. Towards the end, we'll also spend some time on understanding some of the more popular predictive modeling techniques.